Hi everyone, this is Daryl and welcome back to Book Odyssey. With Apple TV's Foundation series reaching its midway point, I thought now would be a good time to collect my thoughts on what's happened so far. So if you haven't watched my first thoughts on Apple TV's Foundation, you should probably do that first as I'm going to be using this as a jumping off point. So I'll leave a link to that here. As I've already talked about in my previous videos, there were some elements to the books that I thought would need to be handled creatively in order to make the translation from book to TV show successful in terms of giving TV audiences what they traditionally want. I can narrow this down, very generally, to characters that an audience can latch onto and, well, violence. No, that's not fair, I don't mean violence. Actually, I, I kind of do mean violence. I guess it's more commonly called action. I discussed the characterization issue in my first thoughts video only briefly, because I could tell pretty early on that this wasn't going to be a problem, or at least I hoped. And at the midway point, I think we can safely say that a lot of effort is being put into the development of the characters. And for me, it's really paying off. We've got Gail Dornick, whose backstory has been woven in as a deviation from the books. This is probably one of the most interesting characters we've seen so far. She comes from the world of Synax, and in the books we're told its inhabitants are simply considered provincial by the more urbanite Trantorians, but in the TV series they're really imbued Synax with a sense of culture and history, and this informs a lot of Gail's character in that her gift for mathematics has made her a pariah on her home world, with the dominant religion of its people having outlawed science, even going as far as to execute those who seek knowledge. Then there's Demozel, who for me has become one of the most intriguing characters portrayed, because as of yet we know nothing about her motivations and her agenda. She says she is working for the good of the Empire, but what we don't know is what her definition of the good of the Empire actually means. If we're to take anything from the books to give us a clue into this character, then she may be manipulating events more than we know at this stage. I'm really enjoying Laura Byrne's portrayal, and I'm interested to see what direction Goya will take this in. The Pace's portrayal of Brother Day is another that I'm enjoying immensely. I had a few doubts about this character, which I spoke about in my first thoughts video, and I felt it was coming off a little cliched to present the Emperor as murderous and tyrannical. I can now see that because we're going to see a number of Emperors come and go, they're using this to explore a range of personalities. Currently Brother Dawn seems to be a chink in the chain of Emperors, and that he doesn't seem to be quite conforming the way the others did. So it would be really interesting to see how this develops and where they take this. It has a lot of potential, I think, and I hope they explore it. And not to forget Salvor Harding, who has also been given the Escoya treatment in order to flesh out this character, which leads me onto the action side of things. If you've read even just the first Foundation book, you'll know that one of the major themes that emerges is the idea around violence being the last refuge of the incompetent. This is a phrase that Salvor Hardin says often to justify his seemingly lack of action when another person might have gone in guns a-blazing. Salvor uses this saying to mean that violence is such a useless option that only the incompetent would use it, and even they would only use it as their last resort. He feels that the incompetent are eventually forced to resort to violence because a better solution remains outside their grasp. So, when we look at Salvor Hardin in the series, it's clear that the character at this point is totally different from the Hardin in the book, because she is in fact responsible for the defence of the Foundation and apparently uses violence as she sees fit. It would be unfair to just say this character uses violence as a first resort, because as we've witnessed, she is calm, logical and resourceful under pressure. But ultimately she reaches for the guns when Hardin in the book would certainly not have he would have expertly manipulated the situation. Even her father states the famous line in homage to the book, violence is the last refuge of the incompetent, to which Salvo then replies that this is the philosophy of old men. This works for TV. I have to admit that because it's one of the issues I could see coming up. 
In terms of providing action, the books are pretty sparse, so unless people really want to watch a load of people sitting around an office strategizing, something had to change. And I guess that this is that change. And I accept and enjoy that. But at this stage, I'm wondering if they've chosen to not have Salvor introduce this theme, how will the series weave it in? Will the series even weave it in at all? It could be something that Salvo learns over the time through the seasons, assuming we get them and she's in them, and this would be great. What a good character arc that would be. But still, then the violence, sorry, I mean action, will have to come from somewhere else. Maybe the mule? Overall, we're beginning to feel that separation from the book that I spoke about in my previous video, and that's okay. And I think this is going to happen more and more. Personally, as I've said, I'm not clinging religiously to the books and I don't need a purist adaptation. What I'm getting is keeping me gripped and adding dimension where I think it's needed, so far. Timing-wise, they seem to be taking a Game of Thrones approach, where some of the episodes will focus on one character only and we pick up on the others in the next episodes. I think there's going to be more and more of this as more characters come in. Obviously, Foundation has an added complexity to Game of Thrones in that these characters sometimes also operate in different times. How it's been handled so far works well in my opinion, and there's been, I think, only one time I've been like, what? What time is this? But then it was quickly resolved. The pacing also works for me, although I've heard a few people call it slow. Personally, I prefer more of a novelistic approach to the explosion followed by exposition followed by explosion approach that a lot of sci-fi TV seems to take these days. <coughs> Star Trek Discovery. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on the Foundation adaptation in the comments. Until next time, guys. Happy reading.